Hey, welcome to my video. Uh, I've been asked to update my previous uh, video, which was done back in 2015, and it was pertaining to the uh, uh, the mayor and accepting $20,000 or golf days or whatever he accepted. Um, they wanted an update on it, so I'm going to give you an update. First of all, uh, I have inquired with the county as to copies of the audio or videotapes that would be recorded during the council's sessions and apparently it either doesn't exist or they don't know where it is. Um, and at that request, I believe they wanted somewhere around $20,000 to try and produce that if they could actually find it. And there was other documents and things I've asked for, but that has not uh, appeared. So uh, I think it's interesting in Haldeman County, we spend all these money on le these big projects and stuff, but we don't spend money on things like tape recording, the council chambers that in, in my view, we really should be recording that stuff because when somebody lies at council or misleads the public, this is a good tool to be really looked at, right? But I guess that's maybe why council doesn't want that sort of thing to happen. Um, so again, that's the end of that one. Uh, as far as this uh, story you're gonna hear today, this is uh, something that I did do, uh, or I released at the public there meeting there a while ago, and I'm gonna clarify some things um, pertaining to the OPP. And we'll wait till we get to that part. So let's move on. Uh, basically, I purchased property in 2008 here in Haldeman County. Um, the owner of the property had signed an affidavit and the affidavit said, among other things, that he used the property continuously for uh, since he's owned it. Um, and then apparently after we bought the property, uh, I was approached by somebody at the county and said, hey, these affidavits may not be true. We started investigating it. And on top of that, we were told by my neighbor that apparently there was a hearing on my property. Now, I checked with the county, I've talked to all the staff that I could talk to, Pam Dusling, a bunch of other people, Nancy Lamb, and nobody knew anything about this hearing whatsoever. In 2010, I received a document from my uh, bookkeeper at the time, I guess it got mailed to him by mistake, and it was a uh, letter saying that there was in fact a hearing on the property and it was telling me or the owner of the property that this is when the time and date for the meeting. I guess that hearing took place and I didn't know about it and they approved what the person was asking for. And it turns out what this hearing was, was a 357 application. And the application is a document that the previous owner signed six months earlier to the purchase of the property saying he had stopped using the property and wanted tax rebate based on that. So on one hand, you have him signing a, an affidavit saying, uh, I swear I've used it for 10 years commercially continuously. And on the other hand, you have him signing a document saying, I stopped using it. Can you give me my tax money back? So now I'm kind of surprised at this point because the document I have is a document that was issued by Nancy Lamb. Yes, the very same lady I've been talking to for over a year says that she has no idea what I'm talking about. Isn't that a surprise? So what do I do? I decide it's time to really protect myself and I tape record a conversation with Pam Dusley. Oh, I'm sorry, with uh, Nancy Lamb. I tape record that conversation. Now, I know most of you are gonna say the tape recording's in bad taste, but quite frankly, I ran into a judge that said to me one time that although he finds it in bad taste, the fact is you got one person saying, you didn't say it, you got the other person saying you did, and then suddenly this tape recorder shows up, shows which person is actually lying. So anyway, what happens is I call uh, Nancy Lamb up and I start talking to her, and immediately she starts making like she's got to look through the archives and try and find this document, and before the conversation gets too far along, suddenly she's reading off of the document. Or is she actually writing the document out? The interesting thing to the, all of this is that we had a discoveries on a, in a lawsuit which pertained to this property and the owners of the property, the daughter, had said under oath that she had gone to the county and filled up this paperwork to apply for the tax credit. Now you would ask yourself this vital question, is she telling the truth? Well, if you think about it, at this point she could say, hey, I've never seen this document before, I don't know what you're talking about because it's not even in her handwriting. That part of the lawsuit would go to her benefit because I couldn't prove that she actually filled out this document and how did it get there? But she didn't. She chose to tell the truth, unlike a lot of other people. So, you know, we now know that uh, at this point, Miss Lamb is reading off of this document and we're talking to her and we want her to send us a copy of the document. 
So a little bit reluctant, but she ultimately does send me a document and says that the document wasn't signed and that she may have to, she was thinking she might have to sign it. We're saying we, we would like this document. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say at this point, well, this is, you know, we, we don't have any tape recorder. So I'm going to play you two bits of inserts. I'm going to jump out of frame here for a second and I'm going to put the thing on so you can hear it. Hopefully you can hear it on camera. I operated this business for the last five years. That, that we all know. And I know that too because, like I said, I, 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 I live in Melbourne, so I mean, you go by there a lot. Yeah. So I think well, I'm, I'll get that document. I, I'm just not sure, but if I remember correctly, I mean, and I might just be in trouble for myself because I know that it's actually through the 2008 pages that you have to get it signed by the owner. Right. I believe I just hit it on his hearsay, as I said, because I know the building. Right. No, well, no, because she says it's not got a signature and it's going to get her in trouble. The interesting part of this conversation is most people would say, well, this is just an employee doing her thing. But listen to this next part where she actually says she knows the people. So she knows the people. So what do we conclude by that? Well, we have a document that we've received from Nancy Lamb that what she fully admits it wasn't signed and that she's going to get in trouble for this and that she knows these people. Now I can tell you that the document I received on the signature had a sw like a circle swiggle and per the owner of the property. When a lawsuit was launched against the county, that document in discoveries shows up and shows up without the per person and just a scribble and nobody knows who that scribble mark is. And it wasn't discovered that it was Miss Land's handwriting until I started comparing some documents and went, hey, th the owner never signed, even filled out the form. This is Miss Land filling out the form. Wow. Anyway, so I turn around, I take this now and I'm, I, I'm telling the county, hey, this has been going on. Like, what are you guys gonna do about this? Um, she says, uh, the county denies it, says this has never happened. In fact, Leroy Bartlett, our council member for the area, when I contacted him about this, he was furious, said there's no way anybody at the county would ever do such a thing. How dare you accuse us at the county? The mayor, I met with him and gave him a copy of the CD that you just heard, a, trans a transcribed copy of it, and a copy of the documents. What did the mayor do with it? Well, he mentioned to me in the meeting that day that running Haldeman County is like being a boy at, uh, you know, the finger in the dike routine. And he says every day it's a different hole you got to plug. I guess what he did is he took the paperwork and that CD and shoved it in the dike somewhere and just plain forgot to give it to anybody because nobody seems to know where it is. Imagine that. So anyway, in 2014, I decide I'm fighting it out with the county again. I'm accusing him of all of this stuff. And um, at that point, Miss General sends me a letter and says to me, basically, if you keep talking like this, we're gonna get a lawyer and we're gonna sue you. Mark Marinick says to me, who's the treasurer of Haldeman County says, if you continue to accuse our, our uh, employees of this behavior, we will bring the full resources of Haldeman County upon you. You're gonna sue my butt off against. Ooh, them's fighting words. Well, except what I do is in 2000 and, uh, 14, I asked for a freedom of information thing and I can tell you that here's another 20 grand they want because they don't want to turn over a bunch of documents, but they do turn over some of the documents and those documents, quite frankly, are not in their best interest. One of them is a letter that Mr. Marinick, Merrick or Merritt, writes Miss General and says, um, well, you know, Miss Lamb did do this, it was done all the time back then, but you know, we've changed policy now. It's not going to happen no more. Hmm. Think about this, folks. You knew in 2010 this took place, but you're sending threatening letters to people saying you're going to sue them if they so much as breathe a word of this? Wow. Hmm. Anyway, 
So at that point, I figure I've got enough stuff that I can take this to the halt to OPP. Now I have to point out, the OPP have been investigating my case from the sale of the property since 2009. In 2014, after the Minister of Municipal Affairs says, holy crap, this should go to the OPP, I take it to the OPP and guess what? Hi, uh, I want to have this added to my investigation. Investigation? What investigation? Uh, yeah, you guys have been investigating the fraud sale? Oh, we got nothing here. What do you mean you got nothing here? They lost the entire investigation. The only reason they could track it is I had a, a, uh, an occurrence number, but they couldn't find any of the witness statements, any of the paperwork, nothing. The OPP, awesome. So they start a new investigation, which is now there's a complaint to head office at, at, and there, there's pressure for them to get it resolved, right? So they go through it and at the end of it, for the criminal investigation to my real estate property, they say, well, geez, because all the people lawyered up, we can't really do much about it, so the case has come to an end. Okay. Analogy. You go rob a bank. You leave the gloves and the mask in the car. They got your license plate, and there's $50,000 on the seat. You're in the house. Do you think when the cops walk in and you say to them, I got a lawyer, I'm not talking to you. Do you think they're gonna leave you sitting there? You're gonna get arrested. You got enough evidence to prove the case. There was enough evidence. They didn't want to do nothing. Thank you, OPP. However, now, this is the part where I'm gonna clarify what the OPP said. It says, uh, this is from the Major Crimes Unit. Uh, he says, uh, as the crimes manager here in Haldeman County, I, have I get to prioritize my cases that we work on. I only have so many people to do the work. When I look at the big picture and the decisions investigated on occurrence over another, I have to take into account the outcome, what lessons will be learned, if the, people, if the problem's been rectified, or if the responsibilities have been taken. When I look at the individual case and the forged document, it doesn't fall as a huge priority for the crime unit. If we were to delay charges, they, the, the, there would be next to no sentence handed down the courts and a lot of uh, work would have to be done before we can get it to the courts. I know this is not what you want to hear, however, I think you sh uh, you're right on track and making headway with the civil side of things and hopefully this will give you a better result. Signed, Chris Foltz, Detective Sergeant, Area uh, Crime Supervisor, Haldeman County. I don't know. I interpret that as in... Yeah, we're, we're, we really don't care. It's a $230,000 fraud. How can you not care about this stuff? You have people forging documents all over the place in Holloman County, a sworn affidavit, and you don't care about it because it doesn't have a good priority. So, at that point, I send the officer back an email and say, when I'm doing a buck 30 going down the highway, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to show the judge. I'm going to say, no, 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 no. Charter of rights, all that sort of stuff. You got to do the same thing for me. What does he do? He calls me back and says, "What you know? He wants me to explain the fraud all over again, and wants me to tell him what's going on with the situation again." So I explain it all over to him again, the Nancy Lamb thing, everything. So now he decides that it should have an independent review. Review. Re Let's go independent. Let's see back. Independent. Dependent. So it gets shipped to Norfolk County OPP. Norfolk, Haldeman, OPP, OPP. Anybody see the sort of crossover thing here? It's the OPP, how can it be independent? Jeez. Anyway, the OPP officer, I give him credit. He actually spoke to the witnesses and the perpetrators, let's call them. He actually spoke to them, where the other officers, quite frankly, never did. So. What does he say? He calls me up and says, Randy, now, I, I know that, uh, you know, what do you think is going to happen when I accuse the county of doing what you, what you say they've done? I said, well, they're going to lie about it, of course. He said, well, clearly they've had uh, legal advice. And uh, what basically they're saying is um, that she admitted to doing this. Nancy Lamb admitted to, to signing on behalf of the owner. So the OPP have the evidence that Miss Lamb signed this document. What do the OPP say they're going to do about that? They say that they can't prove intent, 
that she was just trying to save her job. So, too bad, so sad. Criminal law lawyers, if you're looking at it at this point, I'd like you to post some comments down below here where it says post comments. Because in my view, you have a document that's been created by an employee. She's destroyed the original document. She has knowledge of who the people are. In other words, there's a collation between the two of them. She forges the document. Senior management hide the fact that it's been forged, knowingly threaten a taxpayer of Haldeman and Calamy. Some would call that fraud, conspiracy to defraud, altering false documents. Just to say a couple simple little things. But no, the OPP can't prove intent. I don't know. If you knew that this was a false document and you threaten a person, to me that's an intent to threaten the person. If you forge the document, you sign the document, you're trying to pass it off, isn't that an intent to pass the document off of something that it's not? I don't know. At the end of the day, what Haldeman County has done here is, is uh, I think is criminal and you know, somebody should be investigating this and taking it further. But I wanted to put it on tape and put it out there so you can all see this. Bottom line is, I think this election time, there should be a sweeping. The only thing we should be cleaning up is the dust left from sweeping of change. Council members here have been too close to too many deals. There's a lot of hanky-panky going on. And I am asking that the new council that comes in, that... Uh, the Bellamy report speaks of a, 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 a mechanism that council can use, and that is to ask a judge to come in and do an independent review. I'm asking new council to do exactly that because there's so much hanky panky going on here, people are going to start going to jail, I think. However, until the judge looks at it, we really don't know what's going on. As far as the Haldeman County, the elected officials have lost touch with the people of this community. The staff feel they are untouchable and that they can do whatever the hell they want and get away with it. Now when I say staff, I'm not talking about the normal people in the satellite office and the normal secretaries and stuff, because they're doing an awesome job. I'm talking about the people that think that they're better than the rest of them and higher up and figure that they're gonna get away with it. Now, I know that Miss General is retiring, at least that's the schedule this year. I know Miss Lamb has retired comfortably on a pension. But folks, just to let you know, there is no limitation to criminal charges. Time-wise. Just saying. Anyway, this is as far as I'm going with this. Uh, I just thought I'd give you a holler. And to all those people that made comments on my last video about the backdrop, that was an artificial backdrop. It was made to look like my house was an absolute mess. <laughs> it was actually in the house that was being torn down, the one that was part of the lawsuit. So um, I thank my daughter uh, Tasha for the backdrop because she does video stuff and everything so I thought this would be really nice to do in front of this backdrop. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Uh, continue to uh, leave comments below um, because it's your voice that's going to make a difference, not mine. Whatever you have to say about this, it'd be nice to know uh, that people are actually watching this. Thanks very much for watching this video.